So today we're going to be talking about the iPhone SE 2022 5G. I say 5G because it's supposed to be standard edition, but then I also said 2022 because it's a 2022 variant of it. But anyways, I'm just going to get straight on to the review. So throughout the entire video, I'm going to be putting pictures in here and there just so you know the quality that it can take. And some of them have filters on there and whatnot, but you know, you can probably tell between a regular photo and a filter or not. There's a reason why I'm talking about the camera though. I solely bought this for another camera. Right now I'm using a DSLR camera, a Canon specifically, but I was like, hmm, you know, I like using my phone to record when I'm with friends and whatnot, cause, and the one problem I encountered was we had two DSLR cameras and we had no good quality camera for backup. No good quality cameras or camera in general for backup. So that's why I got this. Now this is a pretty cool device. It has the new A15 chip. So what does that mean? The new A15, the new A15 chip allows you to, well, like save on battery consumption. It's actually really good. So let's talk about battery life on this. This battery life is actually pretty good if you're in a somewhat cool environment. So I'm in my house, probably about like 70 degrees, maybe like 85 degrees outside. And so how long does this battery last between inside and outside? Cool environment when you're in your house, right? I can probably get about eight, nine hours of it. I use this app called Reality on this, and if you don't know what it is, it's just basically, just think of the Metaverse, but for your phone and its anime avatar. So there you go. It's not as big as the Metaverse, but basically you have a 3D model that you create and you can have different outfits for, and you basically go into chat rooms and you talk. It's kind of like a social media app. They kind of made it somewhat like Twitter, but anyways, enough of that. It's very good in the sense of you can get nine hours, you know, if you're at work and you don't pay attention to it a lot, that can basically last you all day. Now, if you're a profession that I'm in where you have to use this for your job, this might not be the best thing for your job. I will say because of the A15 ship, it's better than any of the other SEs especially the 2020 version, the A15 chip literally makes this whole entire phone like that much better. It has the same chip as the iPhone 13. A15 chipset makes this phone so fast and so efficient that that's what actually makes the battery life better. Now it's not supremely better, but it's a lot better. So what are some things that I'll talk about this though that I don't like about it? Well. Here's one thing that I don't like. It has too many bezels. This phone has super big bezels. The iPhone 11 Pro Max, I can remember, doesn't even have as big of bezels as this has. The bezels are literally the top and the bottom and the sides. Now the sides, there aren't very horrible bezels. They're noticeable. But on the top and bottom, oh, it's super noticeable. Of course, you know, in the era of face masks, uh, we're kind of getting out of that era, but it has a button and a touchscreen button, I mean, on the bottom, which really helped. And I'm forced to wear a mask and I can just use my fingerprint to access the phone. So what's good and bad about something? It just basically meets in the middle. This phone right here is super thin, like, I don't even think if I put a phone case on it, I'll feel comfortable with it. This is good that phones are getting thinner in some cases, but I feel like this could really be bent. Not like the iPhone 6S type of bent, but if I put enough force into it, I know I could bend this. And that worries me because, you know, I wear very loose pockets. Sometimes my phones go to my side the back of my uh, leg or whatever is this called that I'm touching that you can't see. Yeah, so you know, I sometimes sit on my phone. So the iPhone Pro Max 11 is big enough and thick enough where if I do sit in on accident for a moment, it won't bend. With this, it might just bend. 
So, another bad thing that I want to talk about it that it's okay at times is gaming. Like Call of Duty Mobile, I'm playing a game recently called World War II. It's like a mobile game that's like World War II based, of course, but anyway, the thing is, it runs hot. Like, especially on the app Reality, of course I was getting 9 hours of it, and it's not a pretty intensive gaming app, but it will literally go hot after an hour of gameplay on Reality. And for like, COD, World War, I'm pretty sure if you play PUBG Mobile, it would just run super hot, where it's actually uncomfortable to hold in your hand. Like for the reality app, I have a stand for this and I had to put it on the stand because it was just burning my hand. Now not physically and literally burning my hand, but it was warming it up pretty badly, which it was a concern. That's the thing, if you're planning to use this for gaming, I wouldn't recommend it. I would say spend the extra 200 bucks and probably get a mini, maybe you'll get a better opportunity to have more fun gaming times but with this the iphone se the third generation 2022 5g whatever you want to call it it's not the best for gaming maybe mobile games like some of the japanese ones that i've been playing are good because it doesn't run very hot and it has not the best graphics but pretty good graphics where you know it won't make your phone go on fire i will say though the best thing about it is the A15 chip and I know I've been talking about it with the battery but this literally makes gaming run smooth even though it runs hot like I said before literally the thing with the A15 chip is good for gaming as long as you don't go hardcore on gaming but just getting in and out of apps quickly pulling something up online it goes really fast. It is a very efficient chip, and I'm very glad that they actually designed the A15 chip. And this has the same chip set as the iPhone 13. It's very efficient. For a good chip set with some older stuff in here, it's pretty good. So how good was my purchase? I made this purchase 20 bucks a month because at the time I couldn't spend 400 bucks for it. I probably could now, but just to make things safe, and to build my credit, I just want to keep using my credit over a long time. It's credit card stuff. I'll have a whole nother video explaining about it, maybe, some other time. But anyways, it's a pretty good camera. I probably showed some videos throughout the whole video that I'm making. Probably put in some pictures here and there. But this is actually a really good camera. It's probably the best single camera on the whole market. I have a Google Pixel 3a and of course it's a 3a and it's like a generation old but man that camera sucks on there it's horrible but this one is a really good camera like I'm actually going to be happy bringing this along with me take photos videos you know if I'm gonna maybe take it to paranormal hunting I'll download some paranormal apps on it maybe it'll do good I don't know the thing is for a camera a backup camera this is really good and if you're like an Android user if you're like you know you already have the most expensive iPhone you know getting this as a secondary backup camera you know backup phone just in case if your main one goes wouldn't be a bad idea I actually generally recommend this for 429 bucks very very good and efficient for it. Now, on my recap, I say that $429 is pretty good. But one thing I just want to add on here is my only problem that's like super duper huge, since I bought this for a very specific reason, I mean, you know, since I bought it for a very specific reason, I don't mind the price too, too much. Like, why isn't it $420? Like, I talked about this in one of my other videos before, but I'm like, this could have been the best meme of all time. Why isn't it a meme that is just so freaking good to have? This is literally one of the best meme phone potentialities you could have ever made and they blew it why well we can't we, we can't lower it nine dollars the th reason why this whole phone comes out is for people who want to have a cheap phone they won't have to worry about buying the brand spanking newest things of all time and it's the best gateway if you're an android user you could use this 
and you won't be hurting the wallet too much. You could just be like, oh, I have an iPhone as my secondary phone, guys. Uh, if you want to, if you want to text, uh, use my this phone number instead. You could literally have gotten so much more clout than you already have, Apple, if you priced it at 420 bucks.